I'm Professor Tari King and I'm from the University of Leicester. So I actually started out as an archaeologist um, at the University of Cambridge and uh, it was when sort of the early stages when genetics was starting to be used as kind of another layer of information. Um, so the Romanoff case was actually the first time that I got interested in that. And as technology has improved, this ability to retrieve analyzable DNA from ancient remains um, has just been skyrocketing. And one of the really nice things to do is to be able to look at the DNA and use that alongside archaeological evidence to build a sort of more holistic picture of what went on in the past. So I was the um, person who led the genetic al analysis in the King Richard III case. What I was doing was I was looking at those two pieces of DNA that are passed down in a really simple way down through the generations. So mitochondrial DNA, female line, and Y chromosome, male line. So had living female line relatives, did that mitochondrial DNA, that matched the skeleton. Um, doing the Y chromosome, slightly different, and I knew this going in because Obviously the Y chromosome that a man has is that of his biological father who might not be the father that he thinks it is. Um, so if there'd been sort of any sort of medieval hanky-panky that had gone on, then there wouldn't be a Y chromosome match. Um, and as it was, um, there wasn't a Y chromosome match. And it was interesting because we, we didn't know where that had happened in the family tree. There's 19 generations that it could have occurred in. Um, and in those 19 generations are some interesting historical royal figures. So when we published it, we said, well, this, this is quite interesting. We don't know where it is, but it could be potentially in these sort of areas, um, and that could have implications for the royal monarchy. And that's what the press completely picked up on. <laughs> And I spent a long time going back up, back up, back up. We don't know where this has happened. Um, and it doesn't have an impact on Queen Elizabeth because that was the big thing was should be, she be on the throne? It's like, oh my goodness, what have we done? Anyway, so DNA, its role in kind of um, looking at history, it's just, it's a layer of information. It's very, very important to place it within context, such as the archeological information or historical information. So for me, it's part of a bigger picture. Thank you.